I'm Lucy Says. I'm a consultant in Reading and I was at Pick Me 7 doing a talk about maths and ancient history because we took a group of children out to Avebury in Wiltshire. It's a very rich source of mathematics and it was interesting for us to work with the children out in the open air um, to compare modern surveying techniques with how they might have done it when they were megalithic man. So a lot of the work that was involved was just with bits of rope, no measuring tools, um, but at the same time we asked them to do the modern techniques so we took with us a theodolite and a total station so that they could actually have a go with some modern surveying equipment um, and lots of trick was involved. So what we did at Bigme was just lifted out a couple of little items. One of them was using the Sagitta method which is a way that you can place points on an arc when you don't actually have to refer to the centre point which is obviously quite useful if you're talking about a circle that might have an arc of 750 metres that's a very long bit of string. So what we did with the Sagitta method is if you draw a chord between two points on an arc um, and find the midpoint and then take a perpendicular from that midpoint to the circumference that is the measurement that's called the Sagitta. If you then take another chord from the, the midpoint on the arc so you're, you're halving the length of the arc, so you have another chord. The sagitta from that chord is a quarter of the original sagitta. So if you know the original sagitta, you can use that to then find another point on the arc by quartering it, and then by quartering it again. I just gave them a piece of rope. They had to make a three, four, five triangle um, so that they could measure right angles. And then they were able to go out, find a couple of trees, pretend that those were stones on the stone circle, and find a second stone that would have been on the arc. And in actual fact, once they got going on the, the system, it got quite quick. The first one took a bit of finding, they had to make the 345 triangle, but then the next one was much quicker and they were just dividing down and, and very little measuring involved, just using a rope. Another activity that we had a go at was making a megalithic yard. Uh, the, a lot of surveying was done by a man called Tom in the 60s and 70s, and he decided from the, the measurements that he taken from a number of stone circles in England and Europe, that there was a common unit of measurement, and that this measurement was possibly, it's only speculation, but possibly created by tracking the course of the stars across one degree of the Earth's circumference. So that gives you lots of suggestions that maybe megalithic man could calculate the circumference of the Earth, um, which is quite interesting thoughts. This is all speculation. If you have read any of Ben Goldacre's work, you might be familiar with the fact that you can fit measurements to just about anything that you like. So we don't know if there is a megalithic yard, but it was a bit of fun to take students out into the field and give them a go with a pendulum and mapping the course of an imaginary star against one degree of the Earth's circumference to get a megalithic yard. So that was a bit of fun. The final thing that we looked at was a thing called the lunation triangle. If you take 13 megalithic yards and mark them out along a, a piece of rope and then another 5 and then another 13, you can hold them into a 5, 12, 13 triangle. So the 13 side is your hypotenuse and that's measuring 13 megalithic yards. If you then assume that each of those megalithic yards is a lunar month and if you imagine dropping that hypotenuse down to a point on the 5 side, so it's in the ratio 3 to 2. So your hypotenuse is going to extend out a little bit too far. The length of your new hypotenuse is exactly the length of a solar year. And the little bit that you have left over is exactly one foot. Now, that to me is just interesting, and it's taking measurements from a long, long time ago and making relationships with them and finding new measurements. And I find it fascinating. The other interesting thing about the lunation triangle is that if you superimpose it onto a map of Britain, you find that Stonehenge is at one corner of this lunation triangle. Uh, the Priscelli Mountains, where the bluestone came from to build Stonehenge, is at another corner. And the right angle down at the bottom is at Lundy Island. And the Welsh for Lundy Island, it means the elbow or the right angle. Now, whether that is a link or not, I don't know, but it's very interesting and worth exploring.